10i. You must be, do you have some review material for the final? Yep, that's what we're doing. Okay. You can verbalize some. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one says to evaluate the six trigonomic functions of theta. Okay. And it gives us a right triangle with uh, one side as one side length is three. One is four, and the hypotenuse is blank. Okay. Is there a right triangle? Yeah. So what's the hypotenuse? Um, it's three squared plus four squared equals C squared. Okay. So what's C? Five. Yeah. And that's actually one you want to memorize, a three, four, five right triangle, because okay. they give it to you so much. You don't want to have to go through the Pythagorean theorem every time you see it. Okay. Now, do they label theta? Is this theta down here? Oh, theta is the top angle. Yeah, so okay. well, it's, it can be either one, but you have to label it because everything, all six trig functions are based on that. So what's the sine of theta? Um, it would be three over five. Most important thing you can memorize in trig is this. It tells you sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is three over five. As long as I've labeled it right. Did I label it right? Um, Cause they could have had three as the height and four is the opposite. Oh yeah. Three is the height. All right. Well, let's go back then because we got it wrong. Now yeah, sorry about that. All about the ratio. So that's three, that's four. The hypotenuse is still five, but it does make the sine of theta different. What is it now? Four over five. Okay. It's cosine of theta? Um, three over five. Tangent theta? Four over three. Cotangent theta? Five over four. No. Oh, wait, cotangent. That's right. Uh, that would be three over four. I give you that one because those two go together like milk and cookies. Right. No matter what you're talking about, tangent goes with cotangent. The ones oh. that are difficult are, well, not particularly difficult. What's secant of theta? Five over three. Okay. And cosecant is five over four. Okay. Sounds like you got that down pretty good. What else? Um, it says find the arc length and area of a sector with the given radius and central angle of theta. Um, so this one gives us a radius of 20 centimeters and theta is 45 degrees. All right, so arc length is equal, what's the general formula? Um, it's R time, or R theta. Well, it's R theta if theta is in radians. But if theta is in degrees, then it's got to be converted to radians. And that's pi over 180. Okay. So what do you get here? Um, Arc length means the this measurement right there. Okay. The curve. So that would be 20 pi over 180. 
Well, no, because you got to put in 45 degrees for theta. So oh, right. it's 45 degrees times pi over 180. Now, 45 degrees times pi over 180 is pi over 4. In other words, if you convert that to radians, have you done radians? Yeah. That's pi over 4 radians. And if you use okay. radians, you don't need this conversion factor. In other words, you'll notice that this equals pi over 4 times 20 equals 5 pi. So that's the arc length. And notice that if I just put in pi over 4 times 20, I get 5 pi also. So it's actually simpler if you do use radians as opposed to using degrees. But if you're using degrees, you've got to convert them to radians. And they also wanted the area. Um, it's the area of a circle. Um, General formula, always. Uh, one half. Uh, uh, triangle. Yeah. Is it circumference? No. It's no. pi r. Squared? Uh-huh. The way I always remember that is, is that pi aren't squared. They're circular. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the area. So, what's the area of this entire circle? Um, 400 pi. How much of this circle do we have if theta is 45 degrees? Um, what if theta were 90 degrees? How much of the circle would we have? Uh, one fourth. So what do we have? Half of that. Uh, one eighth. Okay. So the area is the area of the full circle divided by eight because we only have one-eighth of it. And that's 50 pi. Okay, cool. Okay. And you could actually have figured out the arc length similarly by starting with the circumference is 2 pi r. So we would know that the total circumference was 40 pi, and we're dealing with one-eighth of it. So that gives you that same arc length. In other words, don't forget your geometry of circles. The area of a circle and the circumference of a circle are two of the most important formulas you can know. They are right up there with the area of a triangle. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Uh, these next ones say evaluate the function without a calculator. Okay. Um, the first one is cosine 180 degrees. Well, there's two ways to do this problem. One is to know what the graph of cosine looks like. Where's cosine start? If this is the angle, theta, so when theta is zero, what's the cosine of zero? Um, is it at the same spot as theta? Okay, so you don't know the cosine curve. The cosine curve looks like this. And if you know the cosine curve, then you know the answer to all of these quadrangles. That is a quadrangle. Quadrangle being multiples of 90. That's 180. 
That's 270, and this is 360. So if you look at this graph, what's the cosine of 180? Um, look at the graph, go horizontally to where it goes to 180, and look at what the y value is. Zero. No, here's 180 over here. What's the y value? Here's the y value right here. Oh, okay. It's negative one. Okay. So that's the best way to do it. And as long as we're talking about it, let's go through all of the quadrangles. What's the cosine of zero degrees? Uh, one. What's the cosine of 90? Zero. What's the cosine of 270? Um, that would be zero. And what's the cosine of 360? One. So if you can memorize this curve, that'll answer an awful lot of these quadrangle questions. Okay. There is another way to do it, which, I don't know, at some point you have to memorize that curve. But if you look at the unit circle, what are the coordinates on that point right there? One and zero. The coordinates, the x coordinate is always the cosine of theta. The y coordinate is always the sine of theta. What are the okay. coordinates of that point right there? Uh, zero and one. So what's the cosine of 90 degrees based on this graph? It'd be zero. And what's the sine of 90 degrees? One. Now notice this is a little easier as long as you remember that relationship, that the x-coordinate is cosine of theta and the y-coordinate is sine of theta. Because now you know what the x and y coordinates are. They're minus 1 and 0. So this one has to be the cosine of 180 degrees. And this one has to be the sine of 180 degrees. Okay. And some people prefer this method because they can always figure out what these four points are. The key is remembering, excuse me, that's negative 1. Uh, the key is remembering that the x-coordinate equals sine, cosine of theta, the y-coordinate equals sine of theta, and that's regardless of where you're at. Even if I'm right there, if theta is 30 degrees, this point right there is the cosine of 30 degrees, which is root 3 over 2, comma, the sine of 30 degrees, which is one-half. So met, no matter where you're at on the unit circle, the point on the circumference is cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. And if you really understand your unit circle, you'll be able to figure out those quadrangles, multiples of 90, based on this. Because the other way, you, you kind of need to memorize not just the cosine curve, but the sine curve also. Sine curve starts at zero and ends at zero. Okay. And they both go up to one and go down to minus one. And they do it in increments of 90 degrees. That's, that's 90, that's 180. That's 270, that's 360. So knowing these two curves is extremely important. Particularly the sine and the cosine. All right, what else do we got? Um, the next one is the same thing that we just did but it's a cotangent of 495. 
All right. When you have an angle that is outside of the unit circle, which is to say it's uh, less than zero or greater than 360, the first thing you want to do is bring it into the unit circle. And in this case, you want to subtract as many multiples of 360 as you can. So what is the equivalent angle here? If I don't want to deal with an angle that's greater than 360, subtract 360 from it, what do I have? 135. So in terms of the trig function, the cotangent of 495 is the same as the cotangent of 135. Okay. Now, the way I do these, it does not matter which trig function we're talking about, all six of them. I try to figure out what the first quadrant angle is, because if you're like most kids, you've got the first quadrant angles memorized, and that's all you need to memorize. You can figure out second, third, and fourth quadrant just by knowing the first quadrant equivalent. What quadrant is 135 in? Um, I don't know what, wait, is it the second one? Quadrants go like this, one, two, three, four, and that's 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270. So yeah, it's between 90 and 180, so it's in the second quadrant. So what is its first quadrant equivalency, which they also like to call the reference triangle, or the reference angle? So, like the equivalent to the first yeah, quadrant? Yeah, the, the formula you need to memorize is 180 minus theta where theta here is 135. So what's 180 minus theta? Uh, 45. That's the angle. Now, do we know what the cotangent of 45 is? Um, is it root 2 over 2? No, it's 1. We'll go through that in a minute. It's the reciprocal of the tangent, and the tangent is 1, so the cotangent has to be 1. Okay? Now, that's just the absolute value. We have not put a plus or minus sign on it yet. That's the last step, and I definitely recommend you do it that way. Figure out the number first, and then figure out the plus or minus sign. Now, there's another little thing that's well worth remembering, and that's that all students take calculus tells you all six trig functions are positive in the first quadrant only the sine in the second quadrant only the tangent in the third and only the cosine in the fourth now when I say only the sine in the second that actually means sine or cosecant Cosecant's the reciprocal, so if the sine is positive, the cosecant has to be positive. If the sine is negative, the cosecant has to be negative. So all students take calculus, just give you the primary ones. You have to also know their reciprocals carry the same plus or minus sign. Okay. So in the second quadrant, what is the plus or minus sign on cotangent? Um... On the angle? No. We've already figured out the angle is the equivalent of a 45 degree first quadrant angle. And we know the cotangent of 45 is 1. Now we need to put a plus or minus sign. So use my all students take calculus to figure out what the plus or minus sign is going to be in the second quadrant on t tangent or cotangent. Negative. Okay, now that's the last step. There's your answer, negative 1. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to give you some because I don't like the degree of difficulty here. 
not necessary to have this degree of difficulty. You got to be able to figure out how to do the regular ones. So let me give you some regular ones. So the tangent of 210, which quadrant is that in? Uh, the third one. When you're working in the third quadrant, the formula becomes theta minus 180. If you're in the fourth quadrant, the formula becomes 360 minus theta. You got to remember these three also. And okay. what these formulas mean is that's going to give you the first quadrant angle. So okay. in this case, what is that first quadrant angle? Uh, 30. Okay. And now, to figure out these first quadrant angles, you need these two triangles. And this is really all you need. If you have these two triangles memorized, that answers all of the first quadrant angles that you're asked about. And what you have to memorize is their dimensions. That is 1 square root of 3, 2. This one is 1, 1 square root of 2. Some books will say square root of 2, square root of 2, 2. Same ratios. So okay. looking at those two triangles, if you can draw these, the very first thing when you take a trig test, you will not miss any of these questions. You are now looking at all of the information you need to do any standard trig function of any angle, as long as you remember SOHCAHTOA. So tell me what the tangent of 30 degrees is. Um, it would be... Um, Turn this like you learn the back of your hand. I'm serious. Don't memorize it. Learn it. So you don't have to think ever what tangent means. Okay. Oh, for uh, which I triangle? I want to go through trig. It really is. If you have to make a translation, a slow translation every time, you're going to be in trouble. You really need to memorize these. So tangent is what? Uh, which triangle are we doing that for? First of all, what's tangent? Um, it's opposite adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. And we're talking about a 30 degree angle. So which triangle are we talking about? Oh, the 30, 60, 90. Okay, so what's tangent of 30? Um, 1 over square root of 3. Yeah, and now we still, the last step is always to put the plus or minus sign on it. What is that? It's positive. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and write it in there, even though I wouldn't necessarily normally, but since that's so important part of the process, because we don't get it from the fact that the tangent of 30 is positive. We get it by knowing that's in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, tangent is positive. Okay? Okay. All right, let me just give you a few others. These are a little more straightforward. The one they gave you is, uh, it's just too complicated. By that, I mean you don't need complicated until you learn the simple stuff. So, the sign of 300, the very first step is always, what quadrant's that in? Uh, fourth quadrant. What's its equivalent first quadrant angle? Um, it is 60 degrees. Now tell me the sign of 60. Um, it would be a square root of 3 over 2. Very good. And now put a plus or minus sign on it. Um, minus. It's as simple as that. No matter okay. what the trig function, no matter as long as it's one of the common angles, and by that I mean a multiple of 30, 45, or 60, and those are the only ones they expect you to know by heart. 
In other words, they're, they're, the ones that they say you can't use a calculator are going to always be multiples of 30, 45, or 60. Okay. Now, I'll give you a slightly harder one. What's that equivalent? First of all, what quadrant is that in? Second. What's its equivalent? First uh, quadrant angle. 30 degrees. What is the cosecant of 30 degrees? Um, it would be... Two over one, so just two. Good. And what is its plus or minus sign? Um, it's plus. Yeah, because it's got to be the same as sine. And we're in the second quadrant. Sine is positive, so cosecant has to be positive also. Okay. And that's it. Now, if they want to make it a little bit tougher... Talk about negative angles. Did they ever give you negative angles? Yeah. Now, you can go through the same process. Let's just do it, just so you understand. You can go through it. What is that equivalent first quadrant angle? Um... Actually, uh, actually, um, because this is a negative angle, let's put it inside the unit circle first. Okay. So what do I got to do to get that between 0 and 360? Um, I got to add 360 to it. Okay. Right. So three. If I add 360, then it's actually 330 degrees. Now, I put that in parentheses because that is the same as the sine of minus 30, the sine of 330. Okay. You with me? Yeah. Now, we're going to work with 330. What is the equivalent first quadrant angle? 30. What's the sine of 30? Um, one over two. And what is the plus or minus sign in the fourth quadrant? Minus. Now, that's the way I used to always do them. And then I discovered that there was a method that's twice as quick. And that is to recognize that the sign of a negative angle is exactly negative the sine of the positive angle. So if I were to take my sine of minus 30 degrees, that's equal to minus the sine of 30 degrees. And I know that that's positive one half. My negative sign doesn't go anywhere. So I get it instantly without going through this 330 degree angle back to a 30 degree angle. In other words, I'm actually doing two extra steps there that I don't need to do. Okay. So learn this right there. The sine of negative angle is the same as negative sine of an angle. And that applies to tangent but not cosine. In other words, same thing for tangent. They're both odd functions. And odd functions always have this property. Cosine is an even function. And cosine, the sine of a negative angle, is the same as the cosine of the positive angle. There's no negative sign anymore. So these three relationships... If you memorize these, it'll make taking trig functions of negative angles a lot easier. You won't have okay. to 
find the coterminal angle and then find the equivalent first quadrant angle. Uh, all of that you can skip. Just use these three things. So the sine and tangent are the same, cosine's different. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm kind of getting my Trig 101 session that I feel is absolutely vital for anybody doing Trig to go through this session. Because what happens is that by the time you memorize what you're looking at, you can do any angle. There's not an angle you can't handle as long as it's a multiple, and it will always be. They're not going to ask you what the sine of 132 degrees is. That is not a multiple of 30, 45, or 60. But they will ask you the sine of 135 degrees, because that is a multiple of 45. Okay. Okay? But the only thing you need to answer all of them is exactly what you see on this screen. You should take your camera out, and you should take a picture of that right there. Okay. Just memorize that, and you can't go wrong. I guarantee it. No matter what I ask you, you'll be able to get it just from the information you're looking at there. You give okay. me another one. Give me one of your harder ones, like your cosecant of 465 degrees or whatever that one was. Okay. Um, is radians okay? Sure. Okay. Um. Tangent of negative pi over 4. So using what I just taught you, what's that equal to? Um, that equals negative tan or minus tangent uh, pi over 4. And pi over 4 is what angle? That is 45 degrees. So look at that triangle and tell me what the tangent of 45 degrees is. Um, it'd be one. So what's this answer? Um, one. Negative one. This negative sign is still there. That oh. is what is equal to one. Okay. But it's negative that. So it's negative one. Still, I was able to do it in one step without going through the conversion process. Now, if you are in radians and you're dealing with normal problems, this becomes pi minus theta instead of 180 minus theta. This becomes theta minus pi, and this one on the right here becomes 2 pi minus theta. So there's no problem working with radians. You just have to uh, alter your formula a little bit for converting it to a first quadrant reference angle. Okay. Uh, Jake, are you good to go? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hang in there. Try to memorize right. these, uh, this page here. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.